This lecture is part of a series of lectures for RAD 229, MRI Signals and Sequences, offered in the Department of Radiology at Stanford University. The ninth lecture on gradient echo sequences is divided into four parts. Lecture 9D covers RF spoiled sequences and compares different spoiling methods. The learning objectives for this mini lecture are to explain the motivation and the mechanism of RF spoiling, to explain the choice of the phase increment in RF spoiling, to identify spoiling types from different image contrasts, and to compare the advantages and disadvantages of different spoiling methods. Again, we begin this lecture with this picture, reminding you that gradient echo sequences have no spin echo, there are different spoiling types, as indicated by the question mark, and these sequences have different properties. And at the end of this lecture, we will have seen the three major types of spoiling that provide these three very different contrasts shown at the bottom here. So the RF spoiled sequences, which go by these names, FLASH, SPGR, or T1 FFE, they look like this. They look a lot like the gradient spoiled sequence, except for one change, and that is that the RF pulse phase is incremented, but it's incremented with a quadratic phase increment, which we will explore. So in RF spoiling, the goal is to eliminate the transverse magnetization at the end of the TR. We've talked about this concept many times, including in the excitation recovery type sequence, as well as in some of the other spoiled sequences where we've shown that we have not eliminated this magnetization. Eliminating this will give us T1 contrast. So we use a quadratic phase increment as well as gradient spoiling. And the quadratic phase in increment looks like this, where the phase of the RF on the kth repetition is equal to one half times some phase increment times the k to the power of two, where k is the repetition number. You can think of it that this leads to a shifting spoiled averaged profile, which we'll show a little bit later. The transverse magnetization cancels and we are left with a pure T1 contrast. And again, we see these terms for RF spoiling. And typically, if we see the term spoiled gradient echo or spoiled sequence, they usually mean RF spoiling as opposed to gradient spoiling. But the exclamation is a caution because there is some ambiguity with this term, of course. So what does a quadratic phase increment look like? If we just show RF tips all from equilibrium here, this is a quadratic phase increment. So what you see is that this is apparently a more or less random direction that we're tipping the magnetization. So let's review this with a question. Let's look at the spoiling increment. So if the RF phase uh, for on the kth repetition is phi sub k is given by this, why is theta equal to 180 degrees a bad choice? So if we look at the phase that this will lead to for the RF pulse, you see that this act ends up actually alternating the phase between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And this is not a quadratic phase. It will lead to a periodic signal and it will not lead to the desirable pseudo-random phase that we talked about. So now let's look at the animation of what happens in the RF spoiled gradient echo sequence. On the left, we show quadratic phase RF spoiling. So we're going to show the signal that happens when we increment the phase quadratically. Now in each case, we're going to rotate so that we're seeing the magnetization in the, the reference frame of the echo. So we actually rotate before the RF to apply that RF phase. And on the right, we're going to explicitly zero out the transverse magnetization prior to the RF pulse. So the sequence diagram in the middle shows essentially what we're trying to do. So we want to have some T1 contrast and we want to avoid transverse magnetization at the bottom. So let's play these videos. And you notice the white arrow again is the average signal in both cases. And on the left, we are dephasing magnetization by a spoiler gradient 
and then we do this rotation of the system. So it very quickly becomes very complicated to see what's happening on the left. And then we can speed this up and go multiple times and the magnetization becomes extremely complicated. And this is all within one voxel. Notice on the right, each time we dephase with a gradient, but then we set the transverse magnetization to zero. And the key point here is to look at the two white arrows and you see that they're almost identical here. And in practice, they really are much closer to identical than even shown here. So what you see here is that this approach is actually achieving our goal of matching the case where we could zero out or perfectly spoil at the end of TR. So let's try to put this all together with balanced SSFP, gradient spoiling, and RF spoiling. We've already seen that in a gradient echo sequence, we basically take the balanced SSFP signal and we compress it into a voxel. Now remember, if we do a phase cycling or a constant RF phase increment, we shift this profile. And this is just like shifting the center frequency of the scan. Now I'm going to claim that a quadratic phase increment is actually increasing this phase increment linearly over time. So what this could look like with a small increment is that this profile is actually shifting over time through the voxel. So let's show some examples of this with a very small phase increment. This is the profile shifting through the voxel. So you see that this profile resembles a balanced SSFP profile. However, because of the shifting, it actually has some asymmetry to it. Now, if we speed up this up by using a larger phase increment, it now is moving much more quickly and the signal is not as recognizable as a balanced SSFP profile, but it's still moving through the voxel and it actually still reaches the steady state that is moving. We can increase this further to 117 degrees, which is actually a typical value used. And now you really can't track what's happening very much. But, uh, but the same thing is happening. It's just moving very, very quickly. Now the dashed line here shows the overall average signal here. And what's important is that this actually matches the case of, of perfect spoiling. Now if we go slightly off this, you see that the average signal no longer matches the case of perfect spoiling. So the choice of this increment is really important. And this graph, which is a bit of a classic plot from some papers, shows you the signal as a function of different RF spoiling increments. The dashed red line shows what you would get with perfect spoiling. And you see 117 and 119 degrees, and you see that these actually give you uh, different signals. In the case of 117 degrees, it agrees very closely with perfect spoiling, but 119 degrees does not. So that's how we choose this angle. Now notice that this is for one RF flip angle. Okay, and what we want to see is do we match the T1 contrast over a range of flip angles. So these uh, spoiling increments are often empirically chosen. Now we can view this another way. This is a signal evolution looking across a pixel at the magnitude and phase pattern. On the bottom is the average magnitude and the, and the average phase or the net phase across the or of the signal from the voxel. And while this looks uh, extremely complicated as the steady state evolves, look at the right part of right hand part of the magnitude and phase plots and you see that in the steady state, the magnetization is now periodic over time, but it's also periodic over space. Okay, so this profile really is shifting through the voxel. So hopefully you can see this from the combination of the animations and this diagram. So what happens if we have, if we use EPG to model RF spoiling? Well, we can do this as well, and it looks very similar to gradient spoiling. We have the same coherence pathway diagram but we have almost no spin echoes or stimulated echoes. So this is the evolution of the signal here on the left. And on the right, you see the coherence pathway populations. And it's important to note that there is almost no signal in the F minus states here. And there's almost no signal in the higher order Z states here. So let's look at a question here with regard to EPG states and RF spoiling. So given this uh, state matrix, 
how do we know from this steady state coefficient map that the spoiling is working? So look carefully at this diagram. Look at all of the states in this diagram, and this should tell you. Okay, so the answer here, Z0 has substantial signal, and this is basically unsaturated longitudinal magnetization. Notice that all of the states for n greater than zero, both for z and for f minus, have no signal. So this is really important. Because of this, no signal can return to that f plus zero state where we will observe signal, because there's no refocusing effect. The gradients can only push the f plus states further out, and none of the signal is returning to these f minus states. So this is basically an equivalent way of stating that the uh, essentially that the transverse magnetization is, is completely being eliminated or cancelled out. Now, we can use 120 degrees, but this is actually a bad choice of the phase increment as well. And you can sort of see that if this is your phase increment, that you're going to get, end up in a sort of periodic, uh, periodic pattern of RF uh, phases. And you see that from this diagram, a couple of things you see that there's actually a fluctuation and the, the, the steady state has some periodic oscillation on it. You also see in the coherence pathway diagram that there are some F minus states that are non-zero and that there is quite a bit of Z zero uh, magnetization storage. And this will uh, show up as uh, magnetization that is causing a, a variation in the steady state here. So now let's look at some example images to compare sequences. So this is why we use RF spoiling typically. We want to do pre and post contrast imaging where we inject a gadolinium contrast agent. This has the effect of shortening T1. And the nice thing is this makes uh, tissue much brighter on a T1 weighted sequence. So for example here you can see the wall of the bowel very well in this post contrast image. We can see a high resolution image. Um, and it's acquired fairly quickly. So to summarize RF spoiling before we compare the sequences, we have gradient spoiling with the additional quadratic phase RF. The goal is to eliminate the transverse magnetization, but this will give us a lower signal than GRE or balanced SSFP since we're actually eliminating signal, but it gives us a pure T1 contrast. And again, these are some of the terms used to describe this contrast. So now let's compare these sequences. First, you've seen this picture, and this is contrast, remember, based solely on the end of the TR action. So from the left to the right here, you can see RF spoiled T1 weighted imaging where the fluid is dark. You see gradient spoiled imaging with T1 over T2 contrast, and you see balanced SSFP imaging with T2 over T1 uh, weighting, which is the same same basis of contrast as gradient spoiling, but in balanced SSFP, the fluids tend to be very bright. So now let's look at a question and see if you can identify this. So the question is, for these images, one is an RF spoiled and one is a balanced SSFP image. Which is the one on the right? Is it RF spoiled or balanced SSFP? So try to use what you've learned to determine the answer here. And the answer here is the one on the right is balanced SSFP. There are a number of ways to tell. First of all, the fluid is very bright. And you can see this. These are our bile ducts in the liver. We have opposed phase effects at the edge of the liver here. And we have dark bands where we see these signal dropouts. And these are all characteristics of balanced SSFP that do not exist with RF spoiled imaging. But the main key thing to recognize as you look at more and more images is simply the image contrast. Now we can also look at this. These are the three different uh, main spoiling methods. And what we want to do is look at the signal as a function of flip angle. And in, in all cases, what we will typically see is that this signal is low for a very low flip angle. It will peak at some flip angle, and then it will start to drop again. So the question of what is the best flip angle is really a combination of the signal to noise ratio and the contrast. So in RF spoiling, 
we really want to see T1 contrast, but we also want to see a reasonably high signal. So perhaps these are examples where we might say these are the best choices, but it's a bit of an empirical uh, decision. So we can also compare these sequences in a chart. So let's look at the different sequences, the type of spoiling, what happens with the transverse magnetization, the contrast, and the SNR. So balanced SSFP has no spoiling, which retains the transverse magnetization. This gives us a T2 over T1 contrast and high signal, but remember we have these banding artifacts. If we look at gradient echo, we have gradient spoiling, which averages the transverse magnetization. The contrast is still T2 over T1, but, but the fluids are not as bright. And the SNR in this sequence is moderate because we've reduced some of the signal. RF spoiled imaging uses RF and gradient spoiling. It cancels the transverse magnetization, which leads to a pure T1 contrast, but this comes at a price of slightly lower SNR. So we've talked a lot about the signal evolutions, but we also should look briefly at the echo time considerations. So first of all, the magnitude of the signal in most of these sequences is the signal after the RF pulse with some T2 star decay. So this can be used, for example, in bold imaging, blood oxygen level dependent imaging, where we take advantage of the T2 star difference between oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. We can look at very short TE imaging. Um, this image is a subtraction image of short TE minus long TE imaging, and it allows you to see very short T2 species. And this is simply because there's less decay, signal decay of those species. Now we can also look at the phase considerations of echo time. Remember the phase is the frequency variation times the echo time. So a very common use of this is for fat water imaging, where we can acquire images that are so-called in phase and out of phase, shown on the right and the left respectively. And we can use these to separate out the water component and the fat component in images. Let's also look at the flip angle selection. Here again, we show the three main spoiling types, and we're going to show signals as a function of flip angle for blood at the top and muscle at the bottom. Again, in all three cases, there's a, a flip angle that gives you a peak signal. Now it's important to note the Ernst angle here, which is a function only of the tissue T1. The Ernst angle is the arc cosine of the E1 parameter. Notice that all three of these signals come together at the Ernst angle. Now sometimes people will talk, to the, talk about the Ernst angle for gradient spoiling or the Ernst angle for balanced SSFP. This is not really a correct terminology if they're referring to the peak, because the Ernst angle is a defined angle, and amazingly, the signal from all three of these sequences is identical at the Ernst angle. Now what we can do if we want to optimize is we can look at the peak signal for all three of these cases. Now what I should add is that the Ernst angle is where the RF spoiled signal peaks in any case. So if we look at these peaks, a question is, how do we choose the best flip angle? So we have this example where we might want to plot the signal and, and look at the signal between blood and muscle. So the solid line here is blood and the dashed line is muscle. So which of these flip angles should we use? So do we, use, do we find this by maximizing SNR, maximizing the contrast, or do we use both of these? And the answer is both of these. There's usually a trade-off because we want to have really good contrast, but we also want to have contrast to noise ratio, which comes from having a high signal to noise ratio. So this brings us to the summary for this lecture. And we've looked at a number of different spoiling techniques. We can say that for long repetition times, the dynamics are very sim simple. But for short TR sequences, and we're summarizing all of the steady state sequences we've shown, we have these steady states that form. The signal is very dependent on the type of spoiling we use. We have different kinds of contrast, T1 or T2 over T1. And we often will use magnetization preparation with these approaches as we'll see in a subsequent lecture.
The tools for doing this include block equations, which we saw for the matrix derivation, and extended phase graphs, which are really appropriate for looking at the gradient spoiled and RF spoiled sequences, and hopefully we've provided you with some intuition as to why these signals look the way they do.